If car X followed car Y across a certain bridge that is one half mile long, how many seconds did it take car X to travel across the bridge? So in the prompt, we got a distance and we're looking for a time. Now statement number one says, car X drove onto the bridge exactly three seconds after car Y drove onto the bridge and drove off the bridge exactly two seconds after car Y drove, drove off the bridge. And so when they entered the bridge, car X was following Y with a lag of three seconds. By the time they got to the end of the bridge, car X was following car Y with a lag of two seconds. That means car X was gaining ground on car Y. And it means that car X spent one second less on the bridge than car Y. So if we knew how long car Y spent on the bridge, we could find out how long car X spent on the bridge. Unfortunately, that's the only information we have at the moment with statement number one. So by itself, statement number one is insufficient. All right, now we're going to move to statement number two. And this is a problem where we really have to be careful to completely ignore statement number one and focus only on statement two. Statement two gives us a speed for car Y. Y is going 30 miles per hour. And so that means we could figure out the time for Y, the time that Y spent on the bridge, all that. We could figure out all kinds of things about car Y, but this prompt gives us no information about car X. So by itself, we can't answer any questions about what happened with car X. So by itself, this is also insufficient. Now, we'll combine the two statements. Well, now, from statement number two, we can figure out how much time Y spent on the bridge. And then from statement number one, we know that we just have to subtract one, and that will be how much time that X spent on the bridge. So combining the two statements, we now have sufficient information to answer the question. And so this is answer choice C.